UFOs have non-human origins, part two. So I just read the article in part one, and you gotta you gotta go and read that for yourself. But here, so okay, so they're not human. Who might they be? This takes me surprisingly to Second Peter two eleven through twenty two. So please get out your Bibles or just go ahead and put in a Google. 2 Peter 2, 11 through 22, and it'll be right there. It'll be spelled out. Pay attention to the first two words, guys. It says, whereas angels. Okay, and now for the next rest of this, uh, you know, chapter 2 is talking about these bad angels. Literally, bad angels, okay? So let's start here. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might... Bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, okay, that's not a good angel, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Again, not a good angel and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. So these fallen angels, they take pleasure in stirring up the riots and stirring up the souls, the dark, the darkness in the souls of so many people out there today. You're seeing how it's getting out of control, right? All right, so riot in the daytime spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, get this, while they feast with you. Wait, what? We're having dinner with them? That's what it says. They can come down here and sit at our dinner table, and we don't even know they're a bad angel. We don't know that they're a rebel angel. Wow. Okay, bad angels are not allowed having dinner with me. I'm just putting it out there, okay? So, let's, let's carry on. Verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. What? They can't even take time off from sin? They cannot cease. Oh, here we go. Beguiling unstable souls. Uh, that's us, guys, okay? And... A heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with the man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. Verse 17, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the temptus, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Okay, that would be for the bad angels, the rebel angels. That's Satan's one-third fallen angels, okay? For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. See, they were once holy angels. They were once staring at the face of God and worshiping and praising God. That's who they once were. They were righteous in all their ways. And then Satan came along and deceived them and cost them their, their uh, immortality. Well, I should say cost them their, their eternity with God for a lake of fire with Satan. That's what it cost them. All right, so there we go here in verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Verse 22, but it, it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow 
that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So this is really, guys, an unbelievable, I just think, the greatest understanding of the bad, rebel, evil, Satan's fallen angels. I mean, again, reread verse 13. At the end, while they feast with you, in verse 14, having eyes of adultery, they cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls. I mean, that is a scary thing. Okay, so that's us, guys. We can be without the Word of God, without being in our Bible every day. That makes us unstable souls. So do you understand that? If you don't have the Word of God, the white light in your, in your soul, in, the, in that lighthouse in the second heaven, it's not on. Okay, so you're, you're three parts, your body, spirit, and soul. And your spirit gets activated by becoming born again, right? Your spirit's activated by the sword of the spirit, the word of God. By reading the Bible every day, that's how you activate your spirit. That's how you turn your white light on in your soul. Without that, that lighthouse that's your soul that's in the second heaven, that's what I call the red light district. When you're not in the Bible, the red light's on, which means you are free for a demon occupies, you know, occupy. All the demons can come and occupy you, called seducing spirits. You don't even know that you're demonically uh, possessed because they're seductive. They're called seducing spirits. You really need to get to know this stuff. And I have lots of videos on it. So this is what we're dealing with. Fallen angels are walking all amongst us. So what all do we know about angels, fallen or holy? Okay, we really know a lot about God's holy angels. We do. You go through the Bible, um, angels, or at least whether it's angel without an S or angels with an S, 297 times. And God's holy angels always announce themselves. They're bringing a message from God. I am here of the Lord. God's holy angels make themselves known. There's, no, there's, there's nowhere in the Bible where we don't know that it's God's holy angels are arriving with, with Jesus in the end days. They're blowing trumpets. We know who the holy are, okay? The unholy, they don't announce themselves. All right, so let's go looking here. Um, let's go all the way back to Daniel chapter 2, verse 42 and 43. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. What? Wait. They shall mingle themselves, fallen angels here, right? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So see here, the race of angels, they're the iron. They are strong. They are mighty. They are above us. They are supernatural in everything that they do. We are the miry clay. You know that, right? Humans are the miry clay. So you can see here, they've mingled their seed, and now we become a kingdom, part strong and part broken. All right. Now, what do we know about the supernatural strength of angels? Well, we can go where one angel killed 185,000 Assyrians in one night. Read about that in 2 Kings 19.35. Right, that, that's a holy angel that was sent from God. And you can read in Revelation that Jesus, when he returns with his mighty angels, and just one angel will bring on all kinds of destruction in the end days. Just read Revelation. There's lots to read about angels. The majority of the angels is in Revelation. So just read that for yourself and see what all those angels can bring and do and destroy. Because the angel of death is coming. Absolutely. But what we are here, guys, what we're living with is the lies of the evil, fallen rebel angels that were kicked out of the third heaven all right so let's look at hebrews i think it's going to take on a new meaning for you let's look at hebrews 13 2 chapter 13 verse 2 do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers 
for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. There is nothing there but a warning. Perhaps this is not a holy angel, but be nice to them because they could really hurt you or deceive you. We have no way of knowing in Hebrews 13 too, what kind of angel that is. But they're saying that we've entertained angels unawares. Right? There's a reason for that, we, that we need to know that. All right? In the end days, it'll be really evident. You'll really know. So what we do know is that they can mingle themselves, their seed, with men. Okay, it says that in Daniel. So, the seed of men, now that's humans. So, who are they, right? We read about that seed way back in Genesis, in the beginning, Genesis 3, 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel you all know that we've been through that a lots of times so so it's established right there the serpent has a seed but so do the fallen angels for we know they had offspring with the daughters of men in genesis 6 4 and after that Right, Genesis 6, 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. Okay, that seed, this is this is the uh the, the watcher angels, all right. So right here we see that they did, the angels did have sex with women, they did produce an offspring. These offsprings, it says here, the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Genesis 6, 4. Please open it up and read that. Right there it is. Angels did, are doing today, right now, as they did in the days of Noah. This is no different, okay? They have seed, they have races, they have offspring. And in the days of Noah, if you continue to read down, you'll see that they also mingled their seed. Angels mingled their seed with every single thing that God created in the air, in the sea, and on the land. All right? They're called whatever, half-bird men, half-fish men, half-mermaids. I don't care what you want to call them. They're still doing that. They're mingling their sea. They're creating who knows how many races of beings are out there. They're not of God. All God cares about is us humans, okay? But that doesn't mean there's not a million other races out there that these angels have been tinkering with. I've been in the nurseries. I know this. It's true. I've been there. Okay, what else do we know about these angels? Well, we know they can fly, but there's no mention of wings, okay? So let's read Daniel 10, 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Now if you read all of Daniel 10 to understand what this being said here, you'll know that this is God's holy angel Gabriel sent by God to help Daniel understand this horrible vision that he is having of the end times. But to note here, Gabriel, okay, Gabriel, Gabriel has to leave. His home is with God in the third heaven, okay? So Gabriel is with God in the third heaven, which means that Gabriel is in something, some conveyance, some, some way to travel um, through the second heavens to get to the first heaven of Daniel, okay? So that means he's left, he's got some conveyance, some means the travel because he's left the third heavens he can't just teleport and instantly be beside daniel or he would have no he left the, he left the third heaven he's in the second heavens as he's trying to get to earth you know on the ground where daniel is and he's seen he's caught he's captured and not just for a short period he's captured for 21 days for 21 days and Michael, 
who is the only one that can overcome the Prince of Persia, Devil, the Dragon, Lucifer himself. Michael's the only one that can beat him. So Michael, Gabriel has to wait for Michael to come and free him. Do you see that there? So he's flying, but he doesn't have wings. He's flying something. So what am I saying? Do the good angels and the bad angels both have UFOs? That's what I'm saying, yes. They have means of travel. What do they look like? I don't know. They're unidentified. doesn't matter what they look like. They can travel from the third heavens to the second heavens to the first heavens where Daniel is. And now we saw from the article, right, that I read, part one of this video, they can travel in the water. They can go from being deep in the ocean, maybe the floor of the ocean, to our atmosphere, and to space. They can do this with no problem. Could angels do that? Of course they can. Both God's angels and Satan's angels. All right? Satan's angels never lost their body. They're not demonic spirits. No, they're not demons. Demons are something other than that. Okay? These are angels. They have their bodies. They have their supernatural ability. They are immortal with a super soldier strength. Okay? So just because they're fallen doesn't mean it doesn't tell us in the Bible because they're fallen that they lost any of their ability. It seems that they did not. But they, you can't just call them demonic because they're not demonic. They're bad, evil angels. Does it make them demon? Do they have a demonic agenda? Yes, they have a dark agenda. They hate you. They hate humans. But demons are something other than that. Demons are seducing spirits. They are disembodied spirits. They are disembodied spirits from the Nephilim and from, in my opinion, the pre-Adamic race. In my opinion, in my, that's just me, but I feel strongly that Genesis 1-2 had to happen for a reason. And I see it in Jeremiah 4-23. Jeremiah looks and he sees the earth was forming without void. And he also sees there were cities destroyed and there was no man. Well, there's a reason for that. So I'll let you, you know, take that study on for yourself. I think I've done that in other videos. But the point is, demons are also called seducing spirits, familiar spirits, all of that. They're different. They're disembodied and they want your body. They want to take you over because they want to eat. They want to drink. They want to have sex. They want to do drugs. They want to get drunk. They want to have orgies. They, all, they want to do what they once did on earth. They were all an evil race of people. All right, they were taken out in Genesis 1 2, and they were taken again out in the flood. And the last time, God will come down and throw them into the lake of fire and just be done with this whole evil agenda. Okay, but for now, you've got probably roughly around 666 demonic spirits and or fallen angels all trying to ruin your life. Okay, so there's that. Let me travel on here. All right, so now we know. At least, okay, since the time of Daniel, it's at least been 2,500 years now, okay, that this has been going on. Now, we do know angels can fly, okay, so let's look at, let's look at two examples here. Let's look at Daniel 9, 21. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man, Gabriel, so he says, even the man, Gabriel, Gabriel is an angel, he looks like a man. Okay, we don't know the difference. They could probably, the deal is I've seen my angel and I know he's like 15 foot tall. But can they reduce down to our size? Yes, they can, they can appear to be our size as well. Again, they're supernatural, okay? Don't discount anything that these guys can do. Anyway, let me go back to Daniel 9, 21. I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of evening oblation so here gabriel's flying but gabriel doesn't have wings okay now let's look at another um you know another example is in revelation 14 6 and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people Okay, so here we have an angel, not mentioned by name, but we have an angel fly with no mention of wings. What has wings, guys? Cherubim has wings and seraphim has wings, and you can find that in Ezekiel and you can find it in Isaiah. 
and I'm not here today to talk about cherubs or seraphs, but they do have wings, but not angels, and not archangels either, as not mentioned. Okay. Cherubim and seraphim are a different class, a different rank, a different creature. They're not called angels, but they're called by name, cherubim and seraphim. What are they? Does it, is, you know, we're just given that they are um, definitely the cherubim are part of God's throne. So what we also know is angels can eat and drink. Okay, it shows us um, with Abraham in Genesis 18, 1 through 8. All right. And then also you can look at um, the angels that ate the unleavened bread with Lot in Genesis 19, 1 through 3. So again, in 2 Peter 2.13, 2 Peter 2.13, it says, While they feast with you, this is the one I read back at the beginning, while they feast with you. Now these guys will call themselves everything but fallen angels. Because why? They can't tell the truth. All they can do is lie. That's it. They, okay, fallen angels, Satan, there's no truth. Zero. Zero ability. None. Okay, all they can do is lie. Okay, so they're going to tell you, all, you know, these guys, this is what... You know, John, at his own baptism, looks up and sees, you know, the Pharisees and, and Sadducees approaching, you know, John. And John says, you brood of vipers. And John was able to recognize them. John understood what he was talking to. Or as they're also called, you generation of serpents. They will come in many disguises. And the way that I've seen them in my experience, they'll be called themselves Pleiadians, Arcturians. Andromeda, they'll be beautiful humans, right? People call them Nordics, blondes, tall blondes, whatever. Beautiful humans coming back to save our dying planet, our dying sun. They're going to need to upgrade us to a space-faring race, you know, with their med beds or whatever lie they know that you will buy. They'll all, they'll all approach your own ego, your own pride. They know what, you, what your weakness is and they will get you by that weakness so they will be um they'll also call themselves all kinds of divine counsel spirit guides ascended masters you know the new age has this so established now in the world that it's really convenient way the new age is such a convenient way to think you are god so that you don't actually know god as he is on the tv right there you don't actually know god too inconvenient, too much for you to get the Bible out and study his word. So the new age has you, you know, just hung. You're just hanging yourself on the nearest tree. So they will, and who knows, you know, how many ways they've mingled their seed. Just wait until some of their seeds come out, like the 12-foot praying mantises or the reptilians or whatever. Whatever creature is roaming around on this earth no doubt eating people, you're going to be running to these fallen angels to be saved. There's no doubt about that. And their savior, right? One day the Antichrist. So what we do know is that a third of the angels fell. They are evil and they will be cast into hell. All right. We know that in the end, let's look at Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. There's no parole for these guys. There's no getting out. They turned from God way back when, millions of years ago. Who knows what kind of time frame happened between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. We don't know, okay? But that was when they fell way back then. And they've been, um, they have been basically watching mankind since Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, right? They've been watching since then. The, the, Lucifer and his angels fell before the garden. They, they already fell. And they've been watching us since the garden. Over 6,000 years, guys, they've been watching us. You don't think they know us more than we know ourselves? You don't think that they know how to lure you into their lake of fire? They do. They absolutely do. And we don't know how many, a third, 
Okay, we know two-thirds are holy and stayed with God. One-third rebelled. That one-third could be in the trillions or a number that we can't even imagine. A gazillion. A number that we can't even imagine. Certainly, I imagine way more than humans. Way more. All right, so also... You know, in Matthew thirteen forty nine, so shall it be at the end of the world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. So that is what's coming. And what we are now being told by our own Congress, you know, if Congress comes out and says, wow. UFOs are non-human origins. You don't think that they've already had a press meeting with these guys? You don't think these guys have, have said, look, here's, here's how this is going to go down. This is how this is going to play out. This is what you're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And we're busy trying to trap billions of souls into the lake of fire with us. So you're going to sit down, shut up, while we make our world debut on this stage. Because that we're doing next week. Or whatever. Whatever the date is. I think it's going to be this year. Congress doesn't come out and all of a sudden say... Oh, guess what? UFOs are real and they're non-human. Unless they've been briefed, unless they've been told, this is, you know, we're running the show, we're taking over the planet, and here's what you're going to do, or we're going to throw you to our, you know, our vipers, whatever. Okay, it's real, it's in your face, and you need to wake up and decide whose side you're on, because now's the time. All right, this is the wheat from the tares, this is the goat from the sheep. Are you on the goat side? Are you on the tear side? Are you with the wheat? Are you with the sheep? If you don't know what I mean, I pray that you're encouraged and inspired to open up the Bible and find out what I mean by that. Are you, are you with the goat guy? Or are you with the shepherd? So I'm going to leave you with Genesis 28, 12. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set upon the earth, and at the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And once again in John 1, 51, And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And all God's people said, Amen. God loves you. His holy angels do have charge over you. And just invite them into your house every day. That they, 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 they got to be somewhere to praise God and to sing their songs to God. Ask them to come to your house, the right here now in your living room, with their songs of their praise and their prayers to our almighty King of Kings. God loves you.